Good morning, pregame crew. Good morning, good morning. It's Wednesday, August 18th, 825 a.m. Eastern, 625 a.m. Mountain Time. I will get started in five minutes. Audio visual check, please. Awesome. Thanks, Chuck. Hi, Dana, Judd, Roger, Jorge, Wave Trader, Trader, Night Truck, Angry Buddha. Isn't that an oxymoron? Because Buddha's not like not angry. I guess that's the joke. Good morning. Let's get started with getting to know you. Aw, what do you trade? What is your primary vehicle that you trade? Is it futures, commons, options, forex, crypto? What do you trade the most? Thank you, All Natural and Robert. Good morning. You know what's not natural is how excited I get to do this every morning. It's just not natural. Jason's always like, how do you do it? How do you wake up so early and get so excited? I just love it. I love hanging out with y'all. I love reviewing charts and I like getting organized together because I feel like what we do every morning is what I was missing when I was not consistently profitable. When I, well, let's just call it what it is. Losing money is I wasn't prepared. I didn't do the homework like I should and get the larger 50,000 foot level and then go into sea level. I feel like that's what was missing. And it is my passion, as y'all know, to help traders who are struggling. So I feel like this plugs one of the big gaps in trading for most traders is the preparation. Slow devil, you know what? I'll do it right now. Because we're family and I want to help family. You see that? Do you see it, slow devil? Bear flag potential. So I like to always back up when I see a pattern and tell, go through the scenario of what is happening. Always remind yourself that all of these candles are just maps of human emotions and human emotions are predictable. And that's what a pattern is. A bear flag is a pattern of human emotions. We get full despair. So whoever wanted to sell, they get trapped in here. Bears pile in and they say, oh, we're getting oversold here. I'm going to cover. They cover, we get a little dog leg out is what I like to call it, where it's a bear flag, where it's puny. This isn't a V-shaped bounce. This is a puny bounce. And all that means is that bears are covering right now. It doesn't mean that bulls have all of a sudden found $13 to be a huge buying point for Ford. All it means is bears are covering and they're waiting to reposition themselves up here at the hourly or four hour EMA. So we have a bear flag pattern. Can those be negated all day, every day, every day that ends in Y? Yes, they can. So we have this nice double bottom here on the weekly that must hold for forward 1279. Yesterday we hit 1281. I actually like the risk reward to trade this to the long side, acknowledging you'll get stopped out of these trades more than you stay in the trades, but the risk to reward favors you. So this could be your edge, actually, slow devil, where you say, okay, I'm only going to look for weekly higher lows close to a double bottom. Yes, I'll get stopped out more. My win rate may be 33, 40%, but I'm gonna let it play out or stop out. I like to call it POSO, play out or stop out. And that will give you make you a more consistently profitable trader versus just jumping around from system to system. Hey, Steve, I know that, <laughs> slow devil, I don't think I know. That's one good thing with technical analysis. You don't always know what is going to happen, but I know that 1279 is that support. I don't think, I don't guess, I know. So there is a little gap up here at 1221 to be aware of, but, and gaps can act like magnets. They're not always a self-fulfilling prophecy but they can act as a magnet. So thank you for your question this morning. I hope I helped you a little bit. Awesome. Isn't that awesome, Roberto? It's actually my favorite chart. I have it in my dad's account. I'm getting 
I don't like the word concerned because I'm not concerned about profits. I added it to my dad's account over here when I realized that annual cup and handle on PFE. You won't see a lot of these in your lifetime. This has been developing for 20 years and this third round booster shot thing can only help Pfizer profits. However, when everybody is flipped to the other side of the boat, it may be time to start looking the other way. So I may be scaling out of my dad's account some of these and just look to buy on a pullback, but I'm gonna stay in it as long as we keep these strong uptrends. And I was sharing yesterday in TCG Room, it is so cool to see these cup and handle patterns. So we just saw it on the annual, and now we see it on the 15 minute. These mama patterns have baby patterns all the time. So it's really cool. So I'll get started now. I'm Chart Gal Lori, and I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. We have a community of traders where we share our observations, our trading setups, relevant news in this community with a thousand of my closest friends. True story. We have a channel crypto, marijuana, uh, commodities, short setups. If you're just you just like to trade bear, we got a channel for you. So what I do every morning is I go over the Fab Four futures, commodities, crypto movers and shakers of the day and potential setups. Emphasis on the word potential. That doesn't mean they will work out. We are batting a pretty good average on these setups. Yesterday was a stellar day for the pregame show and the setups that uh, we shared. So they, but we could have a zero for 10 today. So please always remain cautious and make sure these trading setups align with your trading plan. So I'll go over some options, common mistakes soon, but let's get started with ES and this broadening formation. If you're interested in my chart setup, it's on the screen now. You can take a screenshot. I go over it almost every day. So this is ES, this is SPY future. So it's the four hour, you can see that up here. ES futures and I use TradingView as my charting platform. So ES four hour broadening formation. What does that mean? That's a fancy word for we get that low, we get that higher high, we get that lower low. And it is when we get exhaustion to the upside where we get these bull breaks with very little follow through, bear breaks with very little follow through. And now we're in the middle of that range. And we have this formation on all our major except for, okay, there went my computer, sorry. So NASDAQ, four hour broadening formation, YM, four hour broadening formation, RTY, dribble, not a four hour broadening formation. RTY, I've been loud and proud about shorting this and I backed off my short yesterday because our four hour got so oversold. It is very weak. On the weekly, we got this little bear break with very little follow through. It actually looks like a broadening formation as well, but when we scale, we zoom out we could have a monthly bull flag so i started backing off this bearish trade but i want to show you something that i show here intermittently i'm not consistent about showing it i just toggle it on and off here and there the ichimoku cloud ichimoku cloud is a leading indicator 95 percent of the indicators that you see on my chart or anyone's chart including your own is a lead is a lagging indicator means it's going in the past it's using historical data it's just showing you what has happened ichimoku is a leading indicator which is why i like to use it i toggle it on here and there just to kind of check larger time frames i don't use it for small time frames and it's always nice to see how es just stopped in its tracks here at the ichimoku cloud but look at NASDAQ, we're trapped below it. That is a very important differ differentiating uh, uh, comparison for me. ES is definitely stronger than NASDAQ and this gives me a more bearish lean on NASDAQ today. So that's all it does, a little bearish lean. Doesn't mean I'm gonna go short everything under the sun. What am I gonna follow? Price action. Everything else is noise, and it just gives me a slightly extra edge, but doesn't mean that it's gonna give me all the information possible. If you are a cheerleader, or you have been a cheerleader in your past, this is what you're saying to the ES bulls. Hold that line, hold that line. 44, 11, 75, very important level. So we have negated the potential for a bear flag because we got up to that 50% retracement. 
So we're looking for a higher low compared to 44.11.75. Odds favor a higher low. Does it mean we'll get it? Nope. It could totally fall through. I had someone ask me this morning. Uh, it was a falling wedge pattern or something they were asking about. And they said this means it 100% won't break bear. I can't give you a setup on earth ever, ever, ever in the past or the future that has 100% probability. You have to accept that with trading that anything can happen at any given time. It'll make your life a lot, lot easier. So let's give you support and resistance. Key resistance 444875. Support 441175. Four hour gives me the most clarity. If you're an experienced trader and you want to get in there on the hourly, then you can. I don't, I, the four hour just gives me the clarity. Higher high, lower low, lower high. Where she stops, nobody knows. Where will the lower high be? Excuse me, the higher low. Where will it be? Where will we stop here and then tighten up a little more? NASDAQ. NASDAQ is weaker. We see these EMAs slapping down price. What does that mean for Apple? Or what does Apple mean for NASDAQ? They're so tightly tied together. Apple is stronger than NASDAQ. If Apple tightens today, that may give bears an opportunity to pounce on NASDAQ. If Apple blasts off, then this pattern, this bearish pattern could be negated, get that higher low and then get that higher high. Key support, hold that line, 14897. Let me make a bold statement. If 14897, if we break that support, I will be way more bearish on the market overall. That is a key level for me today. So I'll just make that my story of the day is NASDAQ 14,897, 14,900 to make it simple. Hold that line and then the market will stay propped up and then odds favor further tightening. Dow, BA has been weak and we've had the banks weak like GS is part of the Dow. So we have this enough room for a higher low compared to 35034. It's definitely one of their weaker ones. RTY is stronger. RTY on large time frames definitely is the weakest one, but it got the holy SNOT beat out of it. So now we're just getting this oversold bounce and let's see what the bulls can do now with a weekly higher low above 2100. So this is going to come as a shock to a lot of you. I'm looking long RTY, long RTY. We've been beat up. Lots of time frames got oversold. I'm looking for that weekly high or low to get put it, potentially put in on RTY, but I'm not going to be pig headed about it. All right, gold. Uh, and also just a, a heads up. I don't monitor the chat. We have lots of amazing moderators that monitor the chat every day and I don't I, I can't. It's not that I won't. I just can't go over all of these charts in 20, 25 minutes and monitor the chat. But I'll check in with y'all right before I close the mic. So on gold, on gold, we had this awesome bounce yesterday and I was looking for a short here live yesterday. I gave that live trade idea. Then I posted to my Twitter account. If you follow me on Twitter, I posted that I would be covering that short right around here. And then we bounced. Well, the short idea is getting legs again. Back up near 1795, I would be looking short gold. Support 1784, 1782. Oil, oil inventory. Oh, excuse me. I have not brought up the most important thing. FOMC minutes today. So FOMC, uh, actually, I think it's the meeting. So they're in Jackson Hole. So uh, look for volatility. I believe I have to do the time zone conversion. I think uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. So watch out for that. That could bring major volatility into the market. Oil inventory report, another thing to know about. 1030 Eastern today, we have resistance 6772, 6784, support 6618 and 6573. Bitcoin. Bitcoin, we're looking for that daily higher low compared to 43714. We almost touched it. So it is looking very bearish for us to come down this far. The bulls were hoping for a daily bull flag, but now we're looking for a higher low compared to this 43714 level and odds could be a head and shoulder pattern, which y'all know that's my least favorite pattern there is because it's the least reliable as far as follow through. But bears have control of Bitcoin in the short term. We have resistance up at 45557 and then 46192, a support. 4416 43714 Ethereum. If I'm going too fast, you can pause, you can rewind, 
and then whatever you can go back and watch so resistance 308680 318 support 2951 and 2892 let me do that again i think i may have missed one support no i didn't 2951 and 2892 all right options trading i told y'all that i would be going over options trading and i'm just going to give you my notes okay y'all don't have to guess y'all can take a screenshot of this if you would like this is just my quick notes this morning i told y'all i'm kind of like a preacher a message comes to me saying somebody needs to hear this today well if it's you here you go and if it's not you throw this information away and fast forward so most options traders fail because they fail to recognize the game is rigged against you option buying options is completely rigged against you with the way implied volatility is you get a 50 delta that means 50 delta means you're going to get 50 cents of every dollar that it moves so that's rigged against you in commons you get dollar for dollar so you have to you don't necessarily have to know all of the greeks but you have to recognize the game is rigged against you failure to sell premium the majority of the time versus buying premium buying premium your accuracy rate has to be up near 65 70 percent in order to be a successful options trader buying premium consistently if you're constantly buying to open options you have to be ridiculously consistent and that's tough picking the the other thing reason options traders fail is they pick the wrong tool for the job they pick the wrong strike mainly out of the money the wrong expiration they don't give themselves time for the trade to play out and or this the option they don't it doesn't have the liquidity to trade well i always tell people if you have volume of five trades open interest for that day or volume of five that day if nobody's buying who are you going to sell to you have to have liquidity there has to be a, a market a liquid market to buy buy and sell back and forth failure to recognize in order for an option to work it must move greater than the expected move even if it goes oh that's wrong even if it goes in the right direction but does not have the but does not go above the expected move you will still lose so if you pick an amazon call option and it starts going up and bullish it has to go beyond the expected move so it has to have some real giddy up in order for you to make money you really have to recognize that not only do you have to pick the right strike you have to pick and right expiration you have to pick the right direction and timing it has to go faster than the market statistically thinks it will actuaries do all of this they have an expected move and they're pretty pretty dang accurate so you have to be not only in the right direction but it has to move faster than the market thinks it will that's tough position size sizing too big failure to scale out in a profit and with options when you see profit you need to be scaling out not all of it but at least a third and failure to take stops on the underlying i never take a stop on the option itself i take a stop on the underlying so if amazon i'm in a call and i say if it breaks below 3200 i will take a stop on the option if my option is 35 dollars or 3500 dollars, i'm not going to take a stop on 30 on 30 dollars. i'm going to take a stop on the underlying and that is the reason that most options traders fail all right here's our my ideas for today a i never look at a agilent technology seven upgrades this morning i like this little rounded bottom of after hours action don't have a ton of volume but we'll see what the bulls can pull together a pull back to 159.50 could be a bull opportunity how do you trade stuff like that this you can first of all you can just go to the five minute and say let me know when this five minute gets oversold and i'm going to trade this this could be your edge that you trade every day strong bull moves and you wait for the first five minute oversold flip that sucker you can make a living doing that and quit your job yes i said it you can if all of the different risks there's lots of different disclaimers that i should add to that but my point is have a consistent system and follow it grwg this is from john's charts he is a member and he posts amazing setups he is looking for a bottom fish on grwg the problem is we don't have a support level down here below 2835 so you have to monitor current price action and get a higher low to use as a stop because you don't have one below you d dog d dog what was i looking at here potential daily bull flag and four hour eq so we have this tightening pattern here 
did I say four hour? No, hourly, I should have typed hourly EQ. So we have this higher high. It's not completely clean, but we do have a tightening formation and potential daily bull flag. You can see the daily bull flag easily here. We have a daily inside bar. So I like D-Dog to the long side support, 13104129, resistance 13419136222. If NQ is weak today, do y'all think I'm gonna go long this? Nope, nope, erase it off my screen. Gonna erase it, totally erase it off my screen. Oh, I don't know my alphabet. Didn't put these in alphabetical order. So D-Dog, I like to the long side. If, if NASDAQ cooperates, DOMO. DOMO, four hour oversold as we are looking for a weekly higher low. We're at the daily 50 MA. This is one of my swing setups that I love the most. And I'm gonna slow down just a little bit. Looking for a weekly higher low and looking for a weekly higher low, I zoom in to the four hour and look for a four hour oversold condition to position myself for a potential long. And I love, love, love when this setup is at the daily 50 MA. I love this setup when it's at the daily 50 MA. So if you're looking for a swing trade, you could say, okay, Lori likes Domo to the long side. So I'm gonna wait for a 15 minute trend change today and if the market's strong, i.e. NQ, because this is packaged software, it's gonna be closely related with technology. If NQ is strong, I will look to go long here. PLTR. PLTR, this is not the ideal setup for a daily bull flag, but I do like the declining bear volume here. This could be a potential buy. We have this tightening range. So if we could break over 24.25 in yesterday's high, this could be a place to get long for a swing on PLTR, R-E-G-N. <laughs> Greg, yeah, that was probably the most important thing I said, huh? R-E-G-N, oh, didn't spell that right either. Y'all, it's hard, it's hard out here at 3.30 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, whatever, R-E-G-N. REGN says its antibody drug shipments rose ninefold last week versus a month earlier. This could be explosive. However, if you're not an experienced options trader, this will spit you, chew you up and spit you out, this name. They have liquidity issues, spread issues in the options, so please be careful. A pull back to 642.01 area would be a nice area to get long. I don't see us pulling back that low, I, but... Who knows, my magic eight ball is in the shop, but I like it to the long side. Even 650 could be an area to buy to the long side. This could be a good name to get going today, REGN, only for the experienced options trader who knows how to be patient with lemon order. Save Spirit Airlines. This name is beat the you know what up. So on the hourly, a potential hourly inverse head and shoulders. It got to upgrade this morning. I can't believe I'm saying it, but I like this long. These airlines have been beat down. This may be time for a bounce. And I love that we have a support, that a Mars level, we can see from Mars that is so clear, 2287, and we hit 2323 yesterday. I like this chart to the long side. I like it, I like it a lot. So for the airlines, I believe they're most correlated with XLF. I'd probably have to ask Dan about that just to confirm, but I really, I think it's XLF. I don't watch them a lot. So um, yeah, I don't watch them a lot, but I think that's what he says. Okay, oh, Target, I sold an iron condor. If you follow me on Twitter, you saw that it's centered at the 250 strike. I sold an iron, actually it was an iron butterfly is the technical term for it, but in toss, you have to set up a sell iron condor. Why? Because I'm selling premium and I like selling premium on earnings names that are, the premiums are jacked and we expect the premiums to collapse the next day. Is it a, is it a risky trade? It's not like going directional bull or bear. It's a premium selling uh, technique but it can go against you just like everything else. Right now it's working perfectly. Support is down at 242. Let's just have a moment for this. $15 billion share buyback program announced on the EPS beat. Let's look over here. Average volume actually isn't 6 million. I said that wrong in the room today. It's 3 million. That is 20 days of trading volume that's going to be bought up in Target. I will 
be looking to add this to my long portfolio today. I won't do options. I'm going to do common. $15 billion. Billion dollars. Unbelievable. Tilray. Tilray, we will be watching this heavily. TCGers in the marijuana room. I have a small position. I'm barely in the green now. I bought after hours yesterday, so you have support at 1390, 1386, 1365, and then 1440. Let's see if the bears fade this MedMen news. Tilray bought a portion of MedMen, will have exposure to USMJ. Huge news for Tilray. Spy, let's get you some levels, get you on your way. One second, what's the yesterday's high? There we go. Here's your levels. Watch that hourly trend on SPY. QQQ, if you missed it, just hit rewind. I know I go fast at the end, trying to get everybody ready for the day and TCG is over to for Dan to start in nine minutes. Okay, those are your SPY levels. Watch that, uh, QQQ levels, watch your hourly. What do you have for me? Okay, now. This looks great, we have a daily EQ. So you see this, we got a lower low, higher low, and now we're looking for a higher low. I don't know why I had that sat, that's from prior, that alert. Daily EQ. So 57438 is your support, and then down at 566. I don't see a clear setup on this unless you're bottom fishing that daily EQ. CMG. I was looking at CMG this morning. A daily EQ as well. We got that higher low compared to 1852. Now we have a clear line in the sand for this daily higher low. However, if we were to break bear from that, we would still be looking for a weekly bull flag. So on the daily, if we were to break this 1852 and get very little follow through, that could be an area to buy for a potential weekly bull flag. BA, I like CMG. Okay, BA broke this key support. Your next support is way down at Actually, it's down to 218.31. It looks kind of megaphone-ish. Let's see if the bulls can find some support around 219 today, 218. But that doesn't mean get super bullish on it. It could be just a dead cat bounce. MRNA. MRNA had a great candle yesterday. 40797 is your next resistance. It had a big day yesterday. Let's see if it consolidates and goes sideways today or if it gets continuation. Those are usually two of the most likely scenarios after you have a strong day. It typically does not give back the full move. So you either sideways to up versus down. Okay, Uber and Tan, and then I'm done. Uber. Okay, Uber, we got a 40.15. So 40.15, got a double bottom down there. At 40.15, we need to hold 40.58. So your next support, 40.90, 40.58. Resistance is up at 41.40, 41.44. This could be a bottom fishing opportunity on Uber. I would definitely would not be bearish down here in the hole with oversold conditions tan. JKS got some news this morning that was kind of a big nothing burger, but the bulls are just running with it. Like just give us a spark, any spark. So JKS is bouncing today, a big solar component. So tan may have a little bounce today. Watch out for that. Support 7749. We broke that yesterday by 19 cents and bounced. They bulls are buying it as if it's a double bottom. Below yesterday's low, your next support 7488. Next resistance, 7891, 7961. What does it mean for med men? I think it just gives them more capital to function. I would think it's positive for med men. Whoever the buying company is can sometimes get ding like Tilray, but they're getting US exposure, which is a bullish uh, event. And then we have med men who's getting more capital basically on their balance sheet. So that should be positive for med men as well. All right. That's it for me. If you like this at all, or if I helped you at all, please hit that thumbs up, up button. Tell a friend, phone a friend, tell them, hey, listen to this crazy girl in the morning, Chart Guy Lori. Maybe even join the Chart Guys community. TCGers, I'll see you over in the room. Dan will get started in six minutes. And I will see everybody else tomorrow morning.